special Remembrance Day service. Yes. I mean, who knew when we started all of this way back in March <laughs> that we would still be here on Remembrance Day in November. But in lockdown. <laughs> glad that we are because... What, it's, in lockdown? No. Oh, uh, sorry. Remembrance Day. Yes, yes. Being, we are. Well, 
a little bit glad about lockdown as well. But uh, it's great to be uh, together on a day like today and to mm. uh, and to remember to mark the occasion. Yes. Uh, mm. To remember over so many years, so many people's lives have been mm. affected by this. Not theory, is it? No, it's not, day, theory. It it's not theory. It matters to almost every family mm. in the country has been touched in one way or another mm. by by war over the last hundred years and more mm. and uh, my granddad uh, my granddad was a, a lifeguard he was one of the soldiers that wore the white feather things I never met him horse. Uh, I think he might have done actually yeah I never wow. ever never He's ever met right him he stomach. died when my dad was 10 years old uh, he died in Italy after D-Day uh, it was one of the final battles um, and he died um, yeah so never met him and my dad uh, yeah grew up not really knowing uh, his father but sacrifice mm. Mm. yeah yeah so that's what we're going to be looking at today we're going to be looking at uh, remembrance day um, i've got my poppy Where's i have them actually i did go to the sh i trawled every shop not quite every shop in sheffield but every shop near that me that was open <laughs> and, <laughs> and none of them had any they said i did remonstrate with a few people peacefully in a christian manner about why they didn't have any, but they didn't have any, and so I couldn't get it. So mm. yes, apparently they're vectors of disease, like cricket balls. But um, there we go. But anyway, I've got. I'm wearing one in my heart. Yes, in your heart. So we're going to hand over to our worship team this morning to lead us in uh, into a time of worship, and we've just got a great uh, program for you. So over to them. The Lord's my shepherd, I'm a God. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my soul. And I will trust. Trust in 
your name stronger than I know deeper than a thousand words could say your name your name fire in my soul healing for a hurting heart today your name cries out to the Lord of all, to my God and King, to my Prince of Peace, I will lift my voice in praise unto your name.
Thank you so much. Now we're going to have our notices here really, really quickly. Um, last week we announced the cafe was open. Oh, sorry about that. <sighs> Those of you that turned up there and it was closed. Obviously the, the cafe will be closed uh, and it's the same for Pilates as well uh, until further notice. Um, in the prayer walk as well will not be happening but after I finish this round of announcements Jonathan will be just giving you a bit of an update as to how that will be working in the future. No he's not here. Um, it's just by remote control. Oh. Um, and, and also to say that we are missions offering would have been this Sunday as normal but I'm bit, not, not to say unfortunately I nearly said that but because it's Remembrance Sunday it will be next week and the, the gift will be going to uh, CLC and to a Bible project and I believe it's in Belarus but Gary Chamberlain I think is the one who will be sharing with us more detail about that so get ready for that uh, and also just to say that the, the Evangelical Alliance are having a prayer day on the 13th of November um, and Friday you'll see the 13th. Friday the 13th oh Friday the 13th and details of that will be up on the screen as well um, but also it will be on Facebook if you want to find out any more about that uh, prayer meetings this evening obviously uh, won't be at unit three but if you want to be connected to the zoom after the service or if you want to be connected to the to the whatsapp prayer meeting at 7 30 please use this email it'll either be here or, or here um, and we will make sure that you're connected with that do you like my halo i can see very my angelic halo, halo, halo. Halo. is that beyonce or something Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, anyway, over to Jonathan. Maybe you reminded me of her. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> Serious. Serious face. Over to Jonathan. Hi, morning, everyone. Jonathan here, on my way to a pastoral visit. Exercise is really good for us mentally and physically. And although the covenant regulations during the lockdown don't allow us to continue with our our prayer walks that we were doing in groups. We are allowed to meet another person from a different household out in the open air. You can do it for a dog walk. You can do it um, basically with kids uh, under school age, I think, or toddlers anyway, uh, in push chairs as well. But what a great opportunity for you to meet with somebody from the church, from a different household, perhaps to prayer walk around your area that you live, or maybe even decide to go to somewhere like Bitmore, Jordan Thorpe, all the wedges to prayer walk around there. Um, there's no limit, you don't have to be with the same person each day, so you could go with somebody different on different occasions. But it gives us the opportunity to continue to have fellowship, to continue to support and encourage each other. As I cross the road, I'm looking either way. And also, sit to pray for one another, as well as pray for the many needs that we know are in our society. Um, lockdown is a terrible thing for people, but actually the, the health that we get both mentally and physically from walking is a great thing. So can I encourage you all to consider doing some prayer walks during this time? God bless you, bye. Thank you, Jonathan. We've got two Jonathans on this morning. We've got like the, the Jonathan that's out for a walk and then we've got like the posh Jonathan with his jacket. Very, and, very um, impressive. I feel a little bit underdressed myself. I feel, I feel like I'm, I should be on a cruise ship. <laughs> What, serving drinks. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, we've got a presentation now for the children. John and Maria O'Brien mm. are telling a story yes. for the children, and not just for the children, for everybody, the whole family, but uh, but children especially. Pay attention. This is great. You probably already know that today is Remembrance Sunday. 
You might have seen people wearing poppies or perhaps seen them attached to lampposts in your streets. You might even have a poppy yourself. Poppies are a sign to help us remember those people that died in the wars. People that made sacrifices to help people live freely. I was thinking about remembering and it reminded me of a story in the Bible. Abraham and Sarah. God took them on many journeys. These two were really special friends with God. God told them to leave everything they had and start an adventure with him. Abraham and Sarah really, really obeyed. And they would journey for a long time and God would speak to them. And when they stopped, they would remember the journey. They would talk about how God led them. His voice. How he would show them the next step in their lives. This was very important to them both and they would never want to forget it. So Abram and Sarah did something quite strange. They took some stones and they began to build. In the Bible it's called an altar, which is like a holy place. But it's an area where Abram and Sarah wanted to remember what God had done for them. It was so important and it should last a lifetime so they can hand it down to their children and their children's children. A place of remembrance. We got thinking about things that we've done to remember things that have happened to us. You might have gone on holiday too. We went on holiday to Swale Dale in the Yorkshire Dales and we picked up this stone in the River Swale to remind us of that lovely holiday but also because our road where we live it's called Swaledale Road. We found this piece of wood on Holy Island and John thought it looked like a pipe and it looks really fun. So we brought that back to remind us of being in a very holy special place. We've got some lovely photos of our children. There's Caleb and there's Josiah. They're not that old anymore, they've grown up. But these photos help us remember what they used to look like when they were younger. We've also got other photos. Photos of people that are no longer with us. This is a lovely photo of my mum. And I thought I'd make something to remember mum by. She used to write letters for a magazine called The Lady and actually had 40 of her letters printed in the magazine. I didn't feel I could keep all the magazines, but I felt God gave me this idea of what to do with the letters. So I cut them all up and stuck them on a tray so you can read them all. And it's a fun thing to have as well as a reminder of the things that my mum said and did. John and I also love to write down things that God said and things that have happened and answers to prayer in these journals. We've made many journals over the years and it's wonderful to look back and read what we've put and see how much God has done in our lives and how many prayers he's answered. And it's really exciting to see. I wonder what remembrances you can find around your house. Maybe you haven't kept things as a memory and it's something you might like to start doing. Or maybe today on Remembrance Sunday, you could go and have a look round and maybe find something you'd forgotten you'd kept and remember the special time or remember what God's done for you or for your family and you can say thank you to God. 
Thank you, John and Maria. I love the creativity uh, and, and absolutely right. Little memorials in our lives that remind us uh, of everything that God has done and yes. all that he is to us yes. and has been. Yes. Yes. It's offering time, people. Great opportunity to give to God. What a great opportunity. Um, and you'll be able to see how in just a moment.
Felix has gone off to get ready to speak, so it's just me. And we're going to hand over to Aidan in a moment, who is going to read our scripture for us. Um, and then we're going to hand over to Nick, who is going to share God's word with us. John 15, 9 to 17. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no man than this. John 15, 9 to 17. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I have learned from my father, I have made known, known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so that whatever you ask in my name, the father will give you. This is my command. Love each other. Good morning. Technology answers all things. I was searching this week for a poppy that I could wear today and can't find them anywhere this year, but I managed to superimpose one on the screen. So I hope that suffices. It's my pleasure and privilege to bring the word this morning on this Our Remembrance Sunday. Remembrance Day is such an important day on so many levels. For many, it represents personal loss and grief. For others, vivid memories, and for many more, a poignant reminder of the cost of the way of life that we value so highly. A stark reminder that nothing of value ever comes to us cheaply. In preparing to speak today, I got to thinking about why it is that the concept of remembrance has such enduring power. If we're honest, we're very good at forgetting even recent history. Lives come and go and the world goes on, and yet the memory of men and women, the vast majority of them very young, who have lost their lives in pursuit of the greater good, has such a resonance with us that we are marking their sacrifice generations later. Why is that in a world where life is often so very cheap? My conclusion was that life increases in its value exponentially when it isn't just lived, but it is invested it's planted in the hopes and the dreams and the aspirations and the well-being of others. The last time I spoke about Moses, I talked about planting trees, the shade of which we will never sit under. And when we live like that, the impact of our life is felt far beyond the number of years we live or the wealth we amass or the success we gain. Our remembrance today is of young men and women cut off in their prime, denied the chance to live a long life, but investing their youth and their energy into a bigger, broader, brighter future for generations that they would never see. And that's what makes them memorable. That's what marks their sacrifice. It's the responsibility of all of us to so value life and liberty that we don't diminish the cost that the preservation of those things has exacted from many people on more than one occasion. When I was young, my ambition was to join the Royal Air Force and I used to watch the collection of war films that were produced in the 50s and the 60s. And one of my all time favorites was the Dan Busters. I could almost recite the entire script. And there's one scene where Barnes Wallace, the scientist and the designer of the bouncing bomb, played by Michael Redgrave, is talking to 
Guy Gibson, the commander of 617 Squadron, played by Richard Todd, and they're discussing the aftermath of the attack and, and the loss of, of the men that went down in the process. This is what they said. Barnes Wallace met Gibson outside the uh, outside the the crew house, and he said, "Is it true? All those fellows lost." Gibson replied, "Only two aircraft went down in the attacks. That was Hopgood's over the Mona and Maudsley's at the Ada. Astor got it soon after crossing the coast, and Dingy Young was shot down over the sea on his way home. The rest we don't know about." They've been calling them since midnight, but they haven't answered. The flak was bad, worse than I expected. Barnes Wallace got upset, said 56 men. If I'd known it was going to be like this, I would never have started it. And Gibson said to him, now you mustn't think that way. If all these fellows had known from the beginning they wouldn't be coming back, they would have gone for it just the same. There isn't a single one of them that would have dropped out. I knew them all. I know that's true. Look, you've had a worse night than any of us. Why don't you find the doctor and ask for one of his sleeping pills? Wallace said, aren't you going to turn in, Gibby? And he said, no, I have to write some letters first. Maybe there's some artistic license there, but even the statement that you've had a worse night than any of us when it clearly couldn't have been literally true, reflects the attitude that looks beyond our own struggles and hardships and looks first to the interests of others. But 56 young men who, if they had known what would happen, would have done it just the same. War really is about the worst of human nature and its emphatic best. Such a day also, of course, reminds us of Jesus and his short earthly life poured out, invested and given for us in a deliberate offensive against the forces of evil that would otherwise have overrun and imprisoned us. He's our saviour. He sets us free through his life given for us. John fifteen twelve. Jesus said himself, greater love has no man than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. Jesus was talking about himself and issuing a great challenge. Not a call to arms, but a call to see our lives as he sees them. To see them with eternal perspective. To see that they are about what we can give, not what we can get. The commitment, the focus is total. There's no halfway. We say often, don't we? Well, we only live once, don't we? Terrible decisions are sometimes made by people when they see their life passing them by. We must never miss the fact that our lives are measured by how we invest them. Jim Elliot, a missionary martyr in the 1950s, said he is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to take hold of what he cannot lose. I once heard a dramatised conversation between soldiers in the trenches and one was tormented by all he was missing out on and, and, and the thoughts of home. And he was asking the other one how he had found peace or apparent peace in the situation. And his answer was simply that he'd learned to consider his life over. That he couldn't spend time thinking about what he might otherwise be doing because this was now his station and calling in life. This was what his life was. His life wasn't consisting of what he was missing out on. His life was consisting of what he had given himself to at this time. We cannot follow Jesus while we consider what else we might be getting out of life. If the uncertainty of 2020 teaches us anything, let it be that our lives are best spent in the service of eternity, rather than anything we imagine this world can give us. Even Covid will not have been wasted if it gives rise to a new generation of radical disciples, people who are devoted to Jesus and to his kingdom, which can never be shaken. In the light of Remembrance Day, let's consider our own lives, our own investment in the lives of others and the part we can play in building a vision that goes far beyond the years we will live on this earth. Wartime has given rise to some powerful poetry. And I want to finish what I have to say this morning with a reading of In Flanders Fields by John McRae. 
highlighting again the responsibility that we have to consider how we live our lives in the context of those who have gone before and those who will come long after we have gone. And most crucially for Christians, in the context of Jesus' life and his calling upon us. So much of our strength comes from those we know that have already gone. We can look back at those that have inspired us, those that have encouraged us, those that have spurred us on into the future. Let us be those who are part of the foundation of the faith, vision, growth of generations still to come. Let us be those who, who champion the future. That will make our lives truly valuable and truly memorable. Thank you. In Flanders fields, the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place and in the sky, the larks, still bravely singing, fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved. And now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you, from failing hands, we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields.
things that are going on in the life of the church. We're going to pray specifically for Ray and Jean uh, and the family, Andrew, Wendy and children and the grandchildren, uh, specifically at this time. But there's also a number of people that are facing all sorts of challenges. I'm sure everyone can identify with that. And um, we want to pray and we want to, to give thanks to God in advance for all that he is going to do uh, yes. in answer to our prayer. So I'll hand over to you to Okay, pray. thank you. Let's pray together, shall we? Mm. Mm. Father God, we come to you with humble hearts. Yeah. We come to you with hearts filled with with joy because we know you, yes. but also the heaviness, the burden of the things that we walk through in this mm. life. Thank you that you've given us eternal hope. Yes. Thank you that you've given us vision of the mm. future. Thank you you've given us a kingdom that can never be shaken. Yet we know yes. we are in we are in bodies, we are in situations, we are in circumstances mm. that can be shaken any time of the day. Or night, and we pray for Ray and Jean yes. and the family uh, today. We pray for Andrew and Wendy and Julie. We pray for all of their grandchildren mm. as they um, go through all that they're going through. Father, we pray for your peace. Yes. We pray for your comfort. Mm. We pray for your strength. Mm. We offer our gratitude mm. uh, for Ray for mm. his life, for mm. all that he is to so many people in so mm. many places mm. over so many years. And we're just so grateful for, for these God. giants yeah. that, are, that form the foundation stones of our lives. Mm. And Father, at this time, at his 
time of, of physical, emotional, spiritual need, pray that you'll meet him yes. exactly where mm. he is right now. Mm. Pray that you'll meet him with your presence. Pray mm. that you'll surround the whole family mm. with your loving arms and your sustaining power. Yes. We thank you for them. We pray for Jean, Lord mm. God, fill her with your Holy Thanks Spirit. Spirit. Mm. Thank you for the peace that they express mm. and everything that is, that is said. Everything is about it is 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 honouring to you, mm. Father. But I just, we just continue to pray for them because we take nothing yes. for granted, mm. and we ask for your grace to be poured out in their life. Mm. In Jesus' name, we pray for anybody and everybody that is struggling in the fellowship with mm. any set of circumstances whatsoever, Father. Mm. Well, I pray that you would be yes, the lifter Jesus. of our heads. Yes. That that this lockdown pulls us mm. down. It pulls our heads down. It pulls our hearts down. It pulls mm. our spirits down. Mm. But yet, I pray in the middle of it all, you would be the yes, lifter of our Jesus. heads, and mm. that you would give us a hope and an expectation yes. for the future mm. that is beyond what anyone can do for us mm. the lord is on our side yes. and we'll thank you for that and i pray that mm. whoever they may be whatever struggle they're going through they would know father that you are on uh, their side mm. that you are their god you are their sustainer mm. and you are the faithful one we mm. thank you for in advance for all that you're doing yes, in the lives of your people in jesus name Amen. Amen. The Lord is on our side. We will not be shaken. Amen. We're going to hand over to Jonathan now for this particular moment in our service. Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The Lord of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done. The desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Scripture reminds us that God is our refuge and strength a very present help in times of trouble. I will lift my eyes up to the hills. From where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, who made both the heavens and the earth. And this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases, and his mercies never come to an end. They are new every day. Great is your faithfulness, O Lord. Let's pray, shall we? Our God of all hope and consolation, we hold before you today all who have died as a result of war. We particularly pray for those whose lives have been scarred in body and in mind by what they've seen and what they've experienced, and for those who've been bereaved or suffered loss through conflict. May we as a people always remember the great cost of war and never forget the value and the privilege of freedom. We thank you, dear Lord, that you ask us to be peacemakers and peacekeepers in your world and that we know from scripture that where your presence is, there is peace. So today, as your people, we pray for the war-torn areas of our world. We think of nations where there is tension and division. We think of neighbours who are at war with one another. We pray that your church, as your church, we might work for harmony and unity, both in our communities and in our world. And we commit ourselves to the service and ministry of reconciliation. We pray that people will be reconciled to God and to one another. 
We want to pray for a world where nationalism is leading to separation and division and hostility and tension. And it's setting peoples up against peoples. We want to pray for world leaders and statesmen to seek the good of all nations rather than relying or solely being interested in their own. We pray for our own families and communities where we know there is division or tension or fallouts. We pray that we would be people to bring your healing and peace. We pray for those who we know have lost loved ones over the past year and who are still suffering with their grief and loss and bereavement. We ask you, Lord Jesus, that we think of names before you now to graciously sustain those who we're thinking of by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. We ask all these things in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So let us commemorate and commend to the loving mercy of our Heavenly Father, the Good Shepherd of our souls and the giver of eternal life, those who have died in the service of their people or as a result of war and conflict. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let's just now remember in silence those who have died.
Fast falls the eventide, the darkness deepens, Lord with me We have come to the end of our service and we really hope that you've enjoyed uh, being part of it. We certainly have. But just before we finish, I just want to read this as a blessing over you. Um, and it's from Ephesians chapter 3 um, and I'm reading from verse 14 to the end. It says, For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and how long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of the fullness of God. Yeah. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now, may the, the grace, grace of our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ and the, the love of God and, and the, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Spirit be with us all now. Ever and forevermore. And forevermore. And now. And, and forevermore. now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.
Have a great week. Thank you.